So we're going to paint this seagull with a limited palette and the objective here is to paint a white bird on a white background and how we're doing that with shadows and contrast and you can download a PDF from this post which will have an outline of the drawing which you can trace if you want to and then just uh, quick instructions on how I painted this bird. Hope you enjoy this video. Let's get started. So I've traced my seagull based on my sketch template that you can download as well or you can draw your own seagull obviously from a photo reference. Now as you know seagulls are predominantly white and it's always interesting to paint a white object. You can do that either by making a really dark background around the white object or animal that you're painting. But if you want to leave the paper white, which are what I'm going to do in this instance, we obviously need to create some contrast. And for white objects, you have to focus on the shading. And you can use cool or warm colors, it doesn't really matter, that's up to the painting that you want to create. Now I'm going to opt for a very light gray to start with and then we'll mix in a bit of burnt sienna um, for a bit of warmth. My seagull is standing on a rock and I'm imagining a pretty sunny day with the sun being pretty much overhead so that the bottom of the belly is in shade and the rock will actually reflect some light up back into that belly and that's why I'm adding a bit of warm uh, color in in that so that's the rock reflecting back up. I'm going to take my time because I haven't got a lot of area um, to create a lot of interest so I want to make sure that pretty much every brush stroke counts and that every brush stroke has got a little bit of variation in it that will just create a much more interesting texture. So I'm going to add a bit more of my ultramarine blue in there and then continue along the same idea of making everything that's white just a really really light grey. And once we get to the wings, which are quite dark, we'll create that contrast so that it still appears to be white. Might also leave some parts of the head white, just to create um, the impression of light. I'm taking my time, I want to make sure that I I'll stick to the lines in this instance, especially with animals and people, you've got to get the proportions quite right. So if you have a pencil sketch, then you know you might as well stick to it. It doesn't matter if you go a little bit in or out, as you know. I'm sure you're already that advanced yourself to know when to stick within the lines and when you can break the rules. At this first stage, I'm going to keep the edges quite soft. So you can see uh, the breast that I painted there. I softened that out. I don't want any hard lines just yet. I leave that for the big contrast, strong contrast areas and uh, where the shadows are really dominant. The legs are dark. Um, the local color is obviously quite strong, but in my setup, the legs are pretty much in shade. The bird is casting the shadow onto its own legs, so I can go quite dark there. Feet are always a bit tricky with birds and humans and any kind of animal, so I generally like to kind of hide them. Either they're sort of blending in with the ground or they're hidden or they're in the grass that kind of idea where you don't have to be too worried about the accuracy of, of feet, paws, claws, whatever they are. 
Now moving on to the tail feathers. Again, there is some white in the feathers, which in my instance will be this really light blue-gray. <coughs> now I'm mixing a warm orange for the beak, because that is a dry area at the moment, so I can safely go into there. And I've just added a bit of quinacridone gold to my burnt sienna to give it a lovely glowing orange color. And I start with the beak underside with a bit of stronger pigment and then I take off a bit of the paint and then have it lighter at the top because the sunlight's hitting it from above to get a bit of three-dimensionality in there to strengthen that bottom bit and beaks are um, a strong identifier of a bird so you got to get beaks right you know uh, the beak of a seagull it's quite distinct in the shape and a lot of birds have very distinct beaks and that's one area where you can really make your bird look like whatever species it is. Now I'm going to paint the rock just because I've got some paint there on my palette sitting and I'm looking for areas that I can paint while the rest of it is still drying. And often I don't actually, you know, um, make brush strokes but I deposit pigment onto the paper and then just let the water mix and mingle with the paint. I'm continuing with the wings mixing my warm grey with ultramarine and burnt sienna which I pretty much used for everything else already. It's a very classic mix. I'm sure you're already familiar with it, but it's definitely one of my favorites because it's making such a nice gray, can go all the way to almost black. And just by changing the ratio between the ultramarine and the burnt sienna, I can make a, a warm gray or a cool gray or a neutral gray. And now I'm adding a lot more pigment to it because I'm getting to the black parts of the wing feathers. And you can see that I'm taking my time, even though it's a small bird and a relatively simple painting, I want to use every opportunity to make every area as interesting as possible. And I just had a look at my reference photo just to make sure that I know where to leave out a little bit of um, white to create that wing texture. And then adding in the tail feathers, which are darker, again, because there's less light, but also because they are darker feathers. And I'm sticking to my drawing again because the proportions have to be right. The bird needs to be nicely balanced on its legs. It's the center of gravity there. If it's too long or too short, it will feel unbalanced and uncomfortable to look at. I want to paint feathers without painting feathers, especially for the wings. Because once you start with detailed feathers, um, it turns into a very different painting. I wanted this to be quite impressionistic. A few more blobs to the rock. And I'm going to use a bit of that yellow color for the beak also in the eye. Seagull eyes are a yellowy, orangey color. So I'm going to paint that first and then also strengthen the beak a bit. And you can see I've moved on to a very, very fine brush there. This isn't a large painting. So I do need some finer details in there that I couldn't achieve with a big brush or a normal brush. So I've got a few really fine brush, double zeros and triple zeros, which are good for those tiny details like eyes and pointy bits like beaks. 
back to my normal brush or you know bigger brush not normal still a relatively small brush but not as tiny as the other one there's a shadow that the beak casts almost at the edge of the bird and that is quite a strong element in the painting so I painted that shadow and then continued that uh, underneath the head there and at the back but I'm going to soften that out because there's no hard shadows in the face the only hard shadow is that beak shadow and again I'm taking my time this is a really crucial design element of this particular um, bird painting because it's the shadow of the beak and the shadow at the back of the neck that really sculpts this bird and shows where the light's coming from and how strong the light really is. You know, you can now tell that the sun's pretty much right above the bird, so it's almost vertical light falling down. And now it makes sense where the shadow on the rock is of the bird, and now it makes sense that the belly is quite dark and the legs are in shade. And that's probably what I like most about this particular painting is how the shadows are creating this impression of the bird standing in the midday sun on a rock. Now, using my super fine brush again, a very subtle outline of the eye. And I'm taking my time with the eyes because they are the focal point of any living object that's got eyes. We are magically drawn to look things in the eye. So I got to make sure that I get that right. And I've put in the pupil now and the same care needs to be taken there because where you put the pupil within the circle of the eye is where the bird's going to look, you know, closer to the front. It's going to look forward, closer to the back. It's going to sort of look backwards. So you've got to take good care about where you exactly place that, that pupil. And I'm going to add a, just a couple of more marks on the beak with that same color and a few fine shadows here and there. And then I'm just going to strengthen that beak a little bit, just making sure that the light is adequately represented. And that's it, my seagull is finished. I hope you enjoyed this video and you use the reference to paint your own. <laughs>